In this video, the aim of the practical is to determine the internal resistance of a given primary cell using potentiometer. Using potentiometer, we will determine the internal resistance of a battery or of a primary cell. Okay. This is the potentiometer. I will show the apparatus. Now I am just showing the circuit diagram. This is the potentiometer. Actually, potentiometer is a long resistance well. The length of the resistance well can be 100 centimeter, can be 400 centimeter or can be more than that. Okay. This is the potentiometer and this is actually the resistance well. This terminal is A and this terminal is B. This is actually the well resistance well. This is known as potentiometer. Okay. Using this potentiometer, we will calculate the internal resistance of it battery or a primary cell. So this is the potentiometer, this is the starting point of the well. With this starting point we will uh, connect our battery, our main source. The positive end of the main source is connected to the initial point of the potentiometer and then the negative part of the battery will be connected to a key and then the key will be connected to the negative terminal of the battery and the positive terminal of the battery will be connected to the rheostat. Okay. And the other end of the rheostat will be connected to the last point of the potentiometer. Okay, this is one circuit and there is another part of the circuit which, which I have drawn in the below side. You can see from the A point we will connect another battery. We will connect another battery here and with this battery a resistance box is connected and then this with the resistance box a galvanometer is connected and with galvanometer a jockey is connected. Okay, and in parallel with the battery a capital R resistance is connected and this is another key, key 2. Okay. We, uh, we have to calculate or we have to determine the internal resistance of this small battery. Okay. Now we will uh, show the apparatus to you and then we will start the practical. Before starting the practical, I would like to say that we can use the resistance wire of the meter bridge in this practical also. In case of potentiometer, we got a long resistance wire more than 100 cm and in meter bridge we got the wear of 100 cm. This is the basic difference but otherwise we can use the resistance wear of the meter bridge in this practical also or we can use the potentiometer in it. Okay, I will show the apparatus now. Now see the apparatus. This is the apparatus name as potentiometer. You can see two terminals in the potentiometer. This is one terminal, this is another terminal. See, in at that end no terminal is there. Okay, so the wear is starting from here and after such spiral path it is completed at here. Each uh, wear is of length 100 cm. 10 wear is present there. Okay. This is the potentiometer. We will take this point as A, initial point of the potentiometer. And we will take this at the final point of the potentiometer B. But we can also take the meter bridge as the potentiometer. We can also uh, use meter bridge as a potentiometer. See, in the, this is the meter bridge. There one terminal is here. And another terminal you can see. This is here. Okay. These two uh, between these two terminal, where one resistance where is there, with, uh, whose length is whose length is hundred centimeter. Okay. So in this potentiometer, ten wires are there, and in this meter bridge, one wire is there. But the purpose is same. We can also use this is as the terminal A, and this is as the terminal B for our practical. And similarly, we can use. This is as the terminal A and this is as the terminal B. I hope you understand this. This meter bridge is actually used for Western bridge principle. But if we use only these and these two terminal, then it can be used as a potentiometer also. Okay. Now I will show the practical using meter bridge. You can also do this with the potentiometer. Just the connection will be different. Otherwise, everything is same. Okay. This is our first apparatus meter bridge. Secondly, we need a galvanometer. This is our galvanometer. Okay. This is the key we need. And this is the battery, main source battery. And we uh, need a resistance box for our practical. This is the resistance box. And we uh, need a rheostat for our practical. This is the rheostat. Okay. And then we need a primary cell whose internal resistance is to be calculated. This is the primary cell we use. And then we need another resistance as capital R. We will use another resistance box like this for this purpose. And uh, we will need a uh, ammeter also, right? So this is the ammeter, okay? This is the, our entire apparatus. Now we will make the circuit. Positive end of the source battery will be connected to the initial terminal of the resistance well, this one. Then the negative terminal of the source battery will be connected to the key K1.
and the other terminal of the key will be connected to the negative terminal of the ammeter. The negative terminal of the ammeter is connected to the key and the positive terminal of the ammeter will be connected to the rheostat. And the other end of the rheostat, you can see this other end of the rheostat will be connected to the final point of this resistance wire. As we have used this terminal, so we have to use the opposite end terminal of the rheostat. We can't use these two terminals simultaneously. We have to use this and this. Now we will do the second part of the circuit. This is our small primary cell. We will connect the positive end of the primary cell with this terminal of the resistance well. And the negative terminal of the primary cell will connect it to the resistance box. And the other end of the resistance box will be connected to the galvanometer. And this end of the galvanometer will be connected to the jockey. And then the terminal A of the resistance wire will be connected to this resistance. Okay. And the other end of the resistance capital R will be connected to the key K2. And now the other end of the K2 will be connected to the resistance box. The terminal of the resistance box where the negative terminal of the primary cell is connected. We have to connect this side, not this side. We have to connect this side of the resistance box to K2. Okay. Now we will take the reading. We have turned on the power supply. Then I am trying to find out the null point. I have taken the resistance 700 from the resistance box and um, we have taken the capital R resistance 1 ohm from this resistance box. Okay, This is capital R. Now I am trying to find out the null point. You can see the deflection in the galvanometer, right? I am showing you the zoomed view. You are showing the deflection in the galvanometer. Now I am moving the point of the jockey and the galvanometer pointer is also moving. See. The galvanometer pointer is also going to the zero. That means we are trying to find null point. Right. We have reached to the null point. Now we will see the value of the null point from here. The value is 63.5. Okay. This is the null point of the galvanometer. For the capital R, 1 ohm. And in this situation, both the key K2 and K1 are connected. And now we will disconnect the key K2. We will disconnect the key K2. And then we will try to find out the null point. You can see the deflection of the galvanometer and we are trying to find out the null point from here. The deflection is decreasing. Right. Here you can see. Now the value of the galvanometer, now the deflection of the galvanometer is 0 and the value of the null point you can see from here, this is 91.5 when the key K2 is open, right? And from here you can see 
the reading of the ammeter also see the reading of the ammeter 15 division and the least count is 0 0.02 again we will repeat the experiment by changing the value of the capital r we will change the value of the capital r it was 1 now we will change the value to 2 okay now from the capital r resistance box we have taken out the resistance 2 ohm and without connecting the key k2 we will try to find out the null point okay this is our jockey we are trying to find out the null point so we are trying to find out the null point you can see in the galvanometer the null point is still not reached so we are trying to find out the null point now the null point is reached you can see in the galvanometer okay and we will see the value where the null point is reached see the value this is 93.5 without the key k2 and capital r is 2 ohm now we will do the same thing but now the key 2 will be closed okay and we are trying to find out the null point you can see the deflection in the galvanometer and we are trying to find out the null point this null point is reached you can see in the galvanometer and here the value of the null point is 76 right when the key k2 is connected and the resistance in the capital r box is 2 ohm now see the table this is the table this is the ammeter reading this is the position of the null point this is the value of the capital r ammeter reading was constant throughout as we are not changing the value of the resistance in this box so the ammeter reading remained constant for all our reading and without uh, with capital R when the key 2 is closed when these are the reading of the null point when key 1 is open sorry when key 2 is open then we are taking this reading without R okay and the value of the R we have taken out 1 and 2 and for these values of L1 L2 we will apply this formula and then we will calculate the value of the small r this small r is the internal resistance of this battery okay so what is the value of this uh, L2 L2 means with capital R with capital R and with capital R means when key 2 is closed then we are taking L2 when key 2 is closed that means we are taking the reading with capital R then it is called L2 and when key 2 is open then this capital R we are not taking this is the reading without capital R and this without capital R reading is L1 then we will apply the formula and we will get the internal resistance unit of this is ohm so the internal resistance of this primary cell is 0 0.44 0 0.46 like this we will take two more reading for different value of capital R like 3 and 4 and we will get these values of small r then we will average this and finally we will get the, uh, the internal resistance of this primary cell i hope you understand this uh, please uh, see the circuit and the practical carefully if you have any doubt you can ask in the comment section please like share and subscribe the channel thank you everyone